And now, for your entertainment pleasure, an audio murder mystery starring a full cast of suspects. The Death of Dr. Davidson. In the grand dining room of the Wickfield Manor, the guests are finishing their lavish meal. Seated alone at the head of the elegant dining table is Dr. Davidson. And far at the other end, among the assembled guests, sits his beautiful wife, Kitty. As dinner draws to a close... My compliments on the meal, Kitty. The pheasant was superb. Yes, that is an absolute treasure. James is so very fussy about what he can and can't eat. And when he wants to be served, goodness, I don't know how she does it. When he wants to be served? How do you mean? Well, for instance, between you, me and the lamppost, did you know he makes Hannah bring him a cup of cocoa in his study at 1am every single night? Can you imagine? Every single night without fail. And it has to be on time or he roars the house down. The poor dear. She's up with the birds every morning. She must be just exhausted. He used to make our mother do that before Hannah came along. He says it helps her sleep. <laughs> well, he'd never get me to wait on him like that. What foolishness. I think he just likes to make sure the servants know their place. So your mother was a servant to him, then? Isn't everyone? <coughs> Everyone, everyone, if you please. You are most certainly wondering why I have called you all here on this most dreadful of nights. Well, I shan't keep you in suspense any longer. I've gathered you all here because I have an important announcement to make. Dear God, don't say Kitty's expecting. And it involves every person present here tonight. To be quite blunt, I have an appointment with my solicitor tomorrow morning, the purpose of which is to amend my will. And it is my intention to disinherit you all. What on earth? Papa. What? Dear I say, God, what man. the devil? Silence, all of you. I will have silence for many years now. I have suffered through your constant appeals for money, your complaints, your scheming. At last, I have made my decision. I have supported all of you long enough. I earned my fortune through long study and hard work, and it's high time all of you did as well. Papa, please, please explain what has brought this on. Have we offended you in some way? You offend me with your very existence. I've been a loving father for more than half my life, and how am I repaid? With your hand out. And not just your hand, nor your hand, Sadie, nor yours, Rodney. But yours, too, gentlemen, my useless sons-in-law. Really, James, this is out of line. I resent the implication. So unfair of you, Papa. We're your family. Enough, all of you. There isn't one among you that has spared a thought for me throughout the whole of your lives. You have lived off my money and my tender concern without once thinking of what I might need and deserve in return. Papa, that is untrue. Oliver and I live close by so we can attend to you should you ever need help. And I gave up that sailing trip to South America when you fell ill last year. I never left your side. And Marlena won't say it, but she and Harrison nearly divorced over the bankruptcy. Sadie! How dare you? But she sided with you, Papa, over her own husband. Of course she didn't. She sided with that Spanish scoundrel, make no mistake. She eloped with him against my express wishes, didn't she? Harrison Smythe, I'll have you know, I had my investigator on him. His real name. He's Enrique Herrero, and he's wanted by... Maldito bastardo, I'll kill you! You, Papa, you... stop this at once. I told you that in the strictest of confidence. I will not hear another word. Vultures, all of you. I'm beset by vultures. 
And now you're all clamoring to deny your selfish, heartless behavior. It's abhorrent, I say. Unconscionable. This is outrageous. Disinheriting your own flesh and blood? Calling them selfish because they aren't more devoted to you? That's the height of hypocrisy, James. The very height. You're one to talk about hypocrisy. Why, with what I know about you, I could have you disbarred. In fact, I probably should for the public good. Papa! If this is some sort of gag, it's badly done, old chap. Very badly done. Everything may be a joke to you, Rodney, but I assure you, I don't find it the least bit amusing. You're the most ungrateful group of leeches I've ever seen. Kitty, can you not talk some sense into him? As a matter of fact, Marlena, I agree with him. None of you have ever appreciated him. I've seen it myself. You're just using him, playing up to him, so you can ask for more money. Mrs. Davidson, that's absolutely untrue. I've only worked for Dr. Davidson a short time, but I can promise you, I've seen genuine concern for their father from the family. Miss Pangiatis, that is quite enough from you. Do you think yourself spared? Consider your employment terminated, effective immediately. But, but I, I don't understand. Why? Why? A winsome young lady such as yourself, withering away behind a typewriter for 60 pounds sterling a year. Wearing such revealing attire and those new false eyelashes so you can bat your eyes at me more fetchingly. Dousing yourself in that French perfume that enters the room before you do. You can have no other object but usurping Mrs. Davidson. (gasps) Oh, Papa! Dr. Davidson, I swear, I never... His heart belongs to me, Dulcie. Never forget that. Does it, Kitty dear? (laughs) You cold-hearted, empty-headed, gold-digging little prude. Consider yourself cut off without a penny. What? Do you think it has escaped my notice that before our wedding you were flirtatious and adventurous and attentive to a man's needs? And after the ceremony, all affection between us ceased? When you redecorated my late wife's rooms and took to them in solitude? Papa, the horrid. Stop this at once. James, you're upsetting everyone. How long has it been since you warmed my bed, Kitty? Can you even remember? James! Well, I remember. It was the night of our wedding, and no night since. Well, I will no longer tolerate such neglect from my own wife. Not only... Are you cut out of my will? I am filing for divorce in the morning. James, please! I love you! I'm so sorry! That is all I have to say. I have made up my mind. I will not be persuaded otherwise. A good housekeeping is long overdue. In fact, uh, Hannah, Hannah, come in here, please, this instant. Yes, Doctor. Yes, is everything all right? No, it is certainly not. Your services are no longer required in this household. (laughs) I beg your pardon? I have just informed my family, and now I'm informing you. Thank you for your many years of service, some of which I will no doubt look back on with fond memories, but your employment here has come to an end. I have found a buyer for Wakefield Manor, and will be releasing all the staff. I will naturally give you your last two weeks' pay... But by the end of the month, you must find another position. Oh, my heavens. I'm... But, Doctor, I don't understand. Papa, you can't do this terrible thing. You simply can't. I can, and I will. You may fund your home for harlots with your own money, if that husband of yours still has a career when I'm done with him. You vile, horrible man. I hate you. I wish you were dead! I say, James, that was a cruel thing to say. Sadie! Sadie, dear, come back! Father, you simply can't do this. It's... it's... it's monstrous. (laughs) It's done, boy. Every penny of my estate will go to the Church of England Temperance Society, your mother's favorite charity. Now, I shall retire to the solitude of my bedroom... 
You, Kitty, will find the door locked in case your conscience persuades you to try to be a better wife to me. The rest of you are permitted to stay the night on account of the storm, but I want all of you gone by morning. Good evening. Ah, yes. Avarice and greed, man's greatest failings. But can we not add to this list self-pity? Was Dr. Davidson right about his family's neglect? Or were Sadie and Harrison justified in wishing him dead? Join us next time for some answers. <laughs>